Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to take a look at the Nightblade tank build for the Somerset chapter. Nightblades have gotten quite a few buffs, so they're actually a lot better than they previously were for tanking. I do have a written guide on my website, link in the description below. I also do show other good set options and just more info information in general about how to tank on this particular setup or just if you are interested in other sets it's all there when we look at our stats we have a lot of max resources resistance is also nice recovery is not needed where you're running the lord mundo stone for extra health buff food wise you want to run the the standard max health magica and stamina potions tri stat they're quite expensive, but they're really good. They give 7.6k magic, stamina, and 10k health. So that's that's a lot. In terms of a race, I do recommend being an Argonian, Imperial, Orc, Nord. There's a lot of good choices, but Argonian is by far the best because of the resourceful passive. When you drink a potion, you restore 4.6k health, magic, and stamina. Now let me just quickly demonstrate. I use up my stem and magicka now watch my resources when i pop the potion i get so much from pressing one button so you can time it pretty well on top of that you also get three percent max magicka nine percent max health and five percent healing done and healing received so overall very strong i also do recommend being a vampire because of the undeath passive when you have low health your damage mitigation increases by a lot so it's very helpful you need to be stage three or higher for that though and you will take extra fire damage please make sure not to forget to subscribe more videos in the future now again we are on the pts In terms of sets, like always, Evan Armory, this is a must-have for every group because it gives every group member 1118 health. This is really nice. So it makes you more tanky and it also gives more health to your group members. On top of that, it's heavy armor and the stats, you get two health bonus, which is very nice. Now the second set I've chosen to run is a little bit something different than usually. Now again, if you want to run Alkosh instead of this, go for it. You also can run Torux. It's all on my website. But I actually do like the, the idea of this set. So you see, first off, you also have two health bonus, which is nice. And then, whenever you successfully dodge, heal yourself for 5k. It has a two second cooldown. Now, with all the healing buffs, etc., you get about a 6k heal when this procs. And you don't even need to dodge all because we have Mirage, which gives us a dodge chance. And the moment the dodge chance procs, we will actually get heals from this set. That's why it's actually pretty good. I will showcase that later, at the end of the video. But again, if you want to run all Kosh instead of this, go for it. But I just want to use this. It's a new set and I do like how it works. It sucks a little bit because it has a cooldown, but it's only two seconds. So, I mean... It's not too long. Usually Zenimax likes to put 10-20 seconds cooldown on sets, but this is only 2 seconds, so not too big of a problem. Last set, Lord Warden. Again, monster set also, there's a lot of good choices. This is nice because it gives spell and physical resistance on the one piece. And then another 4k when you take damage. And the 4k gets applied to you and your group members if they stand in the circle make sure to have five heavy one light one medium to get to benefit from the undaunted metal passive six percent max resources now on the chest i have reinforced because it gives the best stats and then on the small pieces sturdy and on the he uh, head and pants you want infused. Try stat on the big ones and health and chance on the small ones. Jewelry. So with Somerset you get jewelry crafting. 
if you don't have summers that just run healthy glyphs it's no problem it's actually not even bad for this build uh, because of some abilities i like to run triune because it gives max magicka stamina and health all three then i run two shield play enchants and uh, spell cost enchantment on my website i also show you an option with free infused jewelry trades and potion cooldown reduction this would be the best way in terms of sustain but obviously you would have to drink a tricep potion every 21 seconds and that's too expensive for most people that's why i went with triune weapon or oh, both shields are infused with tristat then in terms of weapon you want also two infused one with a weakening enchant and another one with crusher Crusher reduces the physical and spell resistance of the enemy, so your damage dealers will do more damage. And weakening, it applies, like, it reduces the enemy's weapon and spell damage by 452. This is about a 20% damage reduction on you when you get hit. I'm not sure how much exactly. Maybe if somebody knows, please let me know in the comments below. I never really did the math, but it's a lot, okay? It's a... And with infused enchant, you almost can keep this up 100%, which is nice. That's it about the set. I think I covered most important things. Yes. Now, champion points. Now, green is pretty basic, 56, 21. You want a lot of points here for break, ki break free reduction. Necessity if you do heavy attacks, you restore more resources, which is nice. Pumbling 40 in case you need to dodge roll and shadow ward 81. You need a lot of points in here to reduce the block cost, which is very, very nice. I also do have a 300 CP setup on my site in case you're not max level yet. Then 75 blessed to increase our healing and another 52 to increase our crit healing. Free spell erosion, 47, 73. Now, those are not here for extra damage, but more so for the tactician. When you use roll dodge to dodge an attack, you set the enemy off balance. Nice. I'm actually not even sure if it works with Mirage. It actually should, but I'm not 100%. So now what happens when enemies are set off balance, your damage dealers will do 10% more damage. Then red CP, this is the basic setup. I have more specific trial red champion point setups on my site, like optimized for every trial, because you need different red CP setups to mitigate most of the damage in those trials. Just as a reminder. Spell Shield 6, 66 Iron Clap. Most damage in dungeons and trials is direct damage, so you want a lot of points here. 48, fixed skin, 49, 49, and 32, quick recovery. Now, in terms of passives, you need all class passives. One hand and shield passives, they're very powerful. Then heavy armor all, medium the first two, light the first two. Vampire. Usually, like, it's enough when you have the arm effect. Fighter skilled, you want Banish the wick Wicked. Major skilled, you don't necessarily need it. It's nice to have. Switching order, if you have access to this, the last two. Concentrated barrier is very nice. And deliberation is really strong. Undaunted, you need all racial passives. And then also alchemy, medicinal use. I also have them all listed on my site. And ability wise. We have Mirage, Mirage here. You basically get Major Evasion, Minor Resolve and Minor Ward. So you get a little bit more resistances and a 15% dodge chance. I will showcase that after I've gone through the skills. So when the dodge chance procs, Nocturnal's favor will actually also proc. That's how we re very reliably actually activate this set. Then Dark Cloak. This ability got changed and that's why Nightblade tanks are a lot better this patch. They actually have now a reliable good self heal. 
Poke yourself in shadow to heal for 32% of your max health over 3.5 seconds and gain minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 8%. You will see when we fight against some mobs and they hit us, this heals for about 8k to 10k per second. Really, really strong. Pierce armor. This is your main taunt ability. Funnel health. Now you can also run Swallow Soul if you want to. This is nice. It deals a little bit of damage and heals you and your group members. It's not a lot, but together with your healer, it's not bad. Deep Thoughts. Now this is a Suchic Order ability. If you don't have it, use Spell Symmetry. Now what does this do? When we use this, we channel resources. So... Let me get rid of some stem and magicka. Now I use this, and you see the resources go up fairly fast. Now one thing you cannot block while you're channeling, but you see, the moment I press block, it immediately starts blocking. There is no time loss between stop between the stop of the channel and you can block again. You can immediately block. You can only use this for a second or two, block again, same thing. It's a free ability, it doesn't cost anything. And you get like 2k magic and stamina back, so that's really really cool. On top of that, while you're channeling this ability, you get 30% damage mitigation through major protection from this passive. Now, if you want to stay alive, like if you have a lot of mobs on you, as long as you have Dark Cloak and Mirage active Like when you use those two and then you channel for 3 seconds You're not going to die Because you get like 8 to 10k healing ticks every 1 second on top of this 2k which can crit And on top of Nocturnals You get a lot of healing while you're actually regaining resources Also in Darkness this applies major protection to your group. They can walk into the ability, run out, and they will still have major protection. This is really, really cool. Top of that, they also can activate a synergy and gain a really strong heal over time. Back bar leeching strikes. Very cheap, and this is a must have. You need to keep it up all the time. Now, very important you restore up to 4720 stamina when the effect ends. Now, if you activate this before the effect ends, you will not get those 4k stamina. You need to make sure to let this run out before you reactivate it. And every time you do a light attack or a heavy attack, you, you heal a little bit and you restore stamina. So that's why it's important to light and heavy attacks. Obviously, light and heavy attacks also proc enchantments. Enchantments also proc from weapon abilities reminder heroic slash applies minor maim to the enemy reducing their damage and also gives minor heroism granting you ultimate points a little bit it's really nice refreshing puff now this is a small heal over time it deals damage and it heals for a little bit it's not a lot but it takes for like 1k every second and as you can see, I mean, we have Nocturnal's Favor, we have Dark Cloak, we have Funnel if you want. This also heals. This heals all those small ho healing ticks. Ma make up. So you, like, you get a lot of healing per second. You keep those really up. Then you have Inner Rage. This is your ranged taunt. And Silver Leash. This got changed. We now have access to kind of something similar to chains, like on the Dragon Knight. They can pull enemies to you. Keep in mind, this costs a lot of stamina, you need stamina to block. So, you need to know when you can use this and when not. Aggressive Horn, when you activate this, you get max magicka, stamina and health 10%. And you also apply major force, increasing critical damage by 15% for 9.5 seconds. This here is a mob group, now let me just showcase you, as long as you block we're barely losing stats, even though there's several mobs attacking us. Doesn't matter. 
it's really he easy to heal back up if you really want to try to avoid red circles obviously when i use this it's major protection and it goes up pretty fast and we barely take any damage now again you don't want to channel too long okay which is very important and you can get interrupted from CC like this. You need to be careful. So I really recommend trying to block hard hitting abilities. But as long as they only do light attacks and other stuff. You can easily restore resources. No problem whatsoever. Then even if you run out of stuff. You can still use a pot. To gain a lot of resources. Let me pull a few more. Mothballa craves your death. Go around. There we go. Just make sure to keep up the dark cloak and you're good to go. To the side. Dark cloak is so strong because we have so much health. I think there's a poison ability that keeps interrupting. See, as long as, as I have Dark Cloak up, they're not even scratching me. Because as long as I channel the ability, keep the healing up. I have 30% damage mitigation. Now when we quickly look at combat metrics, just to showcase you the healing. The Dark Cloak hits for 8k max average 5.6. Then the Nocturnal's heal is the second highest. Now in this case, 6k. I mean the set itself only shows 4.88 but because of like buffs and all that stuff it goes higher. Then we have refreshing puff which is also nice 1.7k and 1.2k average. Deep thoughts. Not that big heals but you can see the max heal we got from deep thoughts was almost 4k. Even though the ability only says it heals for 1.8k but that's because it can crit. And on average 2.5. There's so much healing. 5k healing per second. And I didn't even keep Dark Cloak up all the time. Keep that in mind. So if you get used to this. It takes time to get used to this ability. But once you know how to use it. It is working very very wonderful. Anyway I think I talked enough. Let me know in the comment section below. What you think about this. Especially the new like Suchigora skill. And how you would utilize it in dungeons or maybe even in trials. Make sure to not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.